there, Ray here, and today I would like to show you a very cool design that I came up with that allows you to have an automatic tree farm with only 5 blocks. This tree farm will automatically destroy your logs after you have planted the tree. I'll show you how this works. We come in here and we place down a sapling and then we bone mill the sapling. Once the tree grows up, it will be inside the wither and therefore it will damage wither and then the wither will do his block breaking ability and break all the logs. This uses a similar concept as my quadruple core oak tree farm, which we use four withers to destroy four trees all at once. This way you don't have to have pistons or anything to move the logs out of the tree farm before getting destroyed. Besides there being an automatic way to destroy the logs, this tree farm also allows you to automatically plant the trees too. So you can either have the trees plant and have them naturally grow, in which case you would want to have a life source beside them, otherwise they won't grow naturally. So something like this will allow the tree to eventually grow. Or you can automate the process for the player by having the player plant the saplings with his offhand and then come in and hold down right click and then he will continue to bone the mill up the tree until the next tree has grown up. The sapling return system is the only thing that's really missing here and it is possible for the wither to break up to 18 leaves and you need 20 leaves to get an average of one sapling back each time in which case you need to at least have a piston destroy two more leaves and you have to put in a little water system to bring the saplings back to the player. I designed and built this tree farm to mostly prove that withers are not as dangerous as people make them out to be. So I'm going to show you how you can choose places to build this up in as well as showing you how to properly summon this in and also show you how that this can be done in survival. The way that this works is that the wither is summoned in and he is attracted to this chicken down here. And first thing he does is his main head will see the chicken through this block and he will try to get as close as possible to the chicken. So he's going to be hovering above it. So press F3 and B. You can see he's hovering up. But there's typically like to fly up about 5 meters above their target. So he's currently trying to fly upwards but there is a block above him which is this log. The chicken is sitting a little bit to the right side of this block and therefore the wither will be turned in this direction. Since the wither tries to stay focused on the target and if the target moves to the side over here his head's going to move over here too. Because the main head is targeting this direction his side heads will be directly to either side of him. This is important because if the wither would turn his head this direction then his side heads would no longer be inside this bedrock formation and would be elsewhere. Now this bedrock formation is important because right now the main head is busy looking at the chicken but the side heads are not ha they don't have anything to really shoot at so they're kind of bored so they'll randomly shoot off skulls all by themselves as you can see these blue wither skulls which are very destructive but since they're inside the bedrock they will automatically be snuffed out because they cannot destroy the bedrock block. The chicken itself is not walking off of its platform because there is at least three and a half meters um, between him and the next nearest block for him to jump down to. The chicken isn't attempting to move anywhere else on his little block because that is the same block he's already on and he can't pathfind to the same block. By having the wither fly upwards and stick his head up against this block here, it gives us room to plant the saplings down here as well as bone mill. If the wither would happen to be sitting directly on this block, you would be able to place down the sapling, but you wouldn't be able to bone mill it because the wither's hitbox would be inside of the saplings. So when the tree does grow up, it'll see that there is only logs and leaves above the wither and therefore it won't restrict the tree's growth and this way we can get large oak trees although they're a little bit harder to handle but you still get the logs from it. Now there is these two bedrocks from either side that kind of restrict the tree's growth but because the tree is has a lot of different formations that it can take that are not only this formation but other ones it has a lot of tendency to grow upwards where these two bedrock will just probably prevent the tree from being really short. If you want the wither to be able to produce more leaves down low, therefore he can break those leaves and give you saplings, you can place a block up here that's not either a log, a leaf, a sapling, or dirt. And this way it will restrict the tree's growth. Now this will consume more uh, bone mill, but you will be able to get a tree that is much lower and therefore the wither will be able to destroy all the leaves. Now this will only produce at most 18 leaves, therefore you have to still break uh, two more leaves with a piston to be able to get enough leaves broken to give you that chance of getting one sapling per each time. Now when the tree does grow, you can see the majority of the leaves are down low and the wither is able to break them. And of course this works in survival. As you can see, I'm standing in front of the wither and he's not doing anything. And I am in hard difficulty. And you just come up to the wither and here, bone mill the tree. And once the tree has grown, the wither will be able to get suffocated by it and then break the blocks. And you don't take any damage or get withered or anything like that. You can build up this tree farm in any location where there are blocks in this formation that are indestructible by wither. So stuff like bedrock as well as end portal frames can be used. So you can build this in the overworld using the bedrock in the bottom of the ground. 
is in the nether, as well as the floor bedrock. Use it in the ceiling bedrock in the nether as well. You also can use a bedrock that is in the exit end portal, as well as the entrance gateway portal, and the exit gateway portal, and even random gateway portals which generate out at the outer end islands. And you can even use the entrance gateway portal, these end portal frames. If you want to know how to break bedrock as well as other indestructible blocks, I will link down in the description to a playlist which I have all the different ways that you can break bedrock and stuff like that. Out of all these structures, the easiest one to get is the random gateway portals because these you can get more of just by generating more outer end islands and then they'll just randomly generate out there. So this is one I'll be showing you how to set it up at. Here's one of the randomly generated gateway portals which will take you back to the obsidian platform. First thing you want to do is remove the gateway and you can do this a couple different ways just by placing a block that is smaller than a full cube and placing wire up against it. You can even do this in survival and then you just remove the gateway portal. Next thing you want to do is remove the other bedrock formations that you don't need around here. To use that playlist you can choose different types of ways to break this bedrock. Pretty much what you want to do is remove this whole top of the bedrock formation. As well go ahead and remove this and you can leave this little X formation because it will help hold the wither in there when you relog, which I'll explain more later. Now you just put a log right here to hold the wither from going too high. Then underneath here, two meters underneath this, you want to place a dirt block. Then under here you can place in your slab for the chicken to sit on and you want the chicken to be sitting on the far side over here, just like this. Next, you want to encase the chicken so he doesn't get pushed off the ledge when you're summoning in the wither. And then the next part is to summon in the wither. You can actually do this in survival, as I'll show you. you put in your wither down here and your skulls, and I'll hop into survival. Then you place in the skull here and place in the water up above. Then you just walk away. So when the wither explodes, it doesn't damage you. And now the wither will be tracking the chicken. Now you just have to go in and remove the water source that is above the wither if he doesn't remove it himself. And you can also go ahead and remove all the blocks underneath of it. Make sure the chicken is onto the side so that the wither is facing the right direction. So here you can see he's here. Let me give him a little bit, a little bit. I don't want him hanging over too much. Just so the wither is facing in the direction and his side heads are both inside the bedrock here. I use a chicken down here for a target because chickens are pretty easy to get out into any location just by using eggs. Um, other things such as like ender mites are easy to transport using ender pearls. Iron golem and snow golems are easy because you can build them up. That's pretty much all there is to this farm. All you have to do is come in here now and be able to place down your saplings as well as your bone mill. There you go. A couple things to point out, make sure that your chicken is at least three and a half meters above any other blocks, otherwise he'll try to jump off his platform and walk around. And when it comes to relogging, you pretty much just want to make sure that the wither cannot escape. And that's why we had these extra bedrock formations on either side. Because if you don't have a block here when he's relogging, there's a chance that he thinks the chicken is over on this side of the block. So he'll try to hover over top of this block, which will make him stand over here. So before relogging, either place a block there or just leave the bedrock formation in there, which will make it a lot easier to relog. But yeah, this is completely uh, safe to relog. I can go into survival, and by relogging, nothing will occur. The main thing you want to be aware of is that you want the wither to be closer to the chicken than you are when relogging. Otherwise, the wither will attract to the player rather than the chicken, and you also don't want to have a line of sight with the wither's head. This was a fun build to do, and I even designed some of this up on the Twitch stream. If you'd like to join us during our Twitch streams, we stream about every day at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. An automatic tree farm that only uses five blocks. So thank you for watching. If you found this interesting, show me with a like and share this with others. If you'd like to see more contraptions like this, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell button and tell me what you guys think about this contraption down in the description. Bye bye